Welcome to the Uncomfortable Ministry. I am Eric Jarmans, and I'm so excited to be with you all today. Welcome to Uncomfortable Thursdays, and and honestly, I really, really just have a very, very quick message for us today, and uh, I'm going to share uh, this this how how I got to this particular message, and obviously the context of this particular message, and and what it what it kind of re- how it resonates with us in this current season. In this current time of our election, I want to be very clear though before I get into this and before we pray over our time and I give you scripture and we read scripture and we jump right into this. I want to be very clear that in no way, shape, form, or fashion, this message is designed to get you uh, to have one feeling or another towards voting, towards election, towards what political affiliation that you ascribe to, to uh, what candidate that you want to vote for. I truly believe that the church is the, the, the church's position or purpose. And again, I, I'm not Jesus. I'm, I'm not the Lord. I, I don't have my own will. But I truly, truly believe that we must speak the word of God into every single season and situation of our earthly times. It is not for us to find a way to lean one way or the other based upon our earthly convictions, desires, and our own earthly purposes. And I wanted to preface this by saying that because I want people to to digest this message uh, in these next few minutes from a perspective of separating yourself from anything politically, any any, any, situation, uh, political situation that you may have sunken your teeth into, separate yourself and hear God. And so I, I want to just kind of set the tone and 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 uh, the climate, if you will, of this particular message. And so I'm going to give you these particular this scripture. Turn your uh, your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. We're going to read all the way until it's entirely to the to the 22nd verse. So the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 15 through 22. Uh, let me pray for our time so that uh, we can uh, request the, the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and um, to remove all of the things that would allow for us uh, not to hear what God is saying to us. God, we just thank you so much for that we get to share Uh, with our people. We get to share with one another your gospel. We thank you for your word. We know that your word covers everything that this earth has to offer. And so if there's anything that's functioning, that's happening, that's going on on our earth, we should look directly to your word because you've provided that for us. And so we thank you. God, I pray that you would take this time, Holy Spirit, take over this place, this room, this the these um, digital platforms, have your way, Lord, and, 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 and even more importantly, remove me, remove me, use me as a vessel, remove all of my, my own uh, desires and all those particular things, God, just take over this moment, it's time so that your people can hear what it is that you have to say, myself included, and that you get all the glory. Lord, thank you so much for this word today. And I personally thank you, Father Heaven, for putting this on my heart and my spirit. It took some time to kind of get together. It took some time to kind of bring it to this place. But I pray, God, that this will be the fertile ground that you would allow for the seed to be planted. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray and ask it all. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, uh, verse 15. And so I I, I was was, um, getting dressed for work. And for no reason, honestly, literally no reason, my mind was not in any political uh, type of thought process, but just literally the the Holy Spirit just kind of slammed this text into my mind. And not only did it slam this text in my mind, but it also brought kind of understanding and and an application to our current times. And so I just want to share with you very briefly um, you may have already voted. You may have already. You may have canceled. You may have not voted. You may have just completely disregarded and disconnected from this. All, but I just want you to hear the gospel of Jesus and 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 His heart and His words for us as believers and to the world as well. But definitely to those of us as believers in this particular time. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and so you will find these words in verse 15. It says, 
And this is a very familiar passage of scripture. I'm not going to read anything that's going to blow your, blow your mind away that you haven't read already. And it says, then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Verse 19, Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him the denarii or denarius. And Jesus said to him, I'm sorry, Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. I just want to read verse 21 one more time for a point of emphasis. They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And so just for a few uh, brief moments, uh, not, not a heavy, not a deep theological message, but just something to kind of uh, get our hearts and mind around this particular time and understanding and resetting ourselves to the place that we have to understand that it is God's word that guides us and not earthly situations and earthly events. And so I just want to talk to us from the subject it's not about who is on the coin, the coin, it's your rendering. It's not about who is on the coin, it's your rendering. And so when we look at this particular text, just to give a little bit of context of what's going on, Jesus is deep into his teaching ministry, not too far away from going to the cross. And so he's kind of uprooted some things and, and, and there's, there, there's, there's like several different factions going on right now. You obviously have the Roman Empire controlling everything, and the Jews of Palestine is 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 is, is subject to the to the Roman rules and regulations and to their government. And so you have Herod Antipas, who's governing the Roman laws and the Rome the Roman laws and all of its its taxation on the Jews and anyone else that's there. And so Herod Antipas considered himself to consider himself a Jew, and he considered himself to be kind of a, 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 a liaison. But in actuality, he's just kind of governing all the things that Rome because he wants to be respected and 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 liked by the Roman government. And then you have the Pharisees who are this religious sect, this religious group who are stuck and and locked into. Um, the, the, the first five books, the law. And so they're kind of like uh, governing the Jewish people based upon uh, the Pentateuch. The and then you have um, the Herodians, those who support Herod and Herod Antipas and his, his governing of the Roman laws. And so you have all these different factions of people. And then you have Jesus. And here it is, Jesus has come on the scene. He is the Messiah. He's healing people. He's teaching in the temple. He's, he's healing the sick and, and healing the blind. And so there's kind of a confrontation here. And so what has happened is, is Jesus is in this place where he's doing things to disrupt uh, the purpose of these other factions. And so the Pharisees, they like walking around with their chest out and their, their, their religious kind of rulings, and they like being respected. And here it is, Jesus is teaching forgiveness and, and, and healing people, and he's, he's a problem to them. The Herodians, Jesus is a problem to the people, to the Herodians and, and, and Herod Antipas, because he has a, a he's he's disturbing up the people. The people are not looking to follow the guidelines of the Roman Empire. And so he is a problem, to put it in 
uh, today's terms, as they oftentimes talk about in sports, talking about someone who's good, they, they say he's a problem. So Jesus is a problem. And so one of the things that oftentimes you can kind of delineate between uh, or, or find out wh how, how someone actually lies and, and whether they break in the law, whether they stand with this person or stand with this person is always offering some type of political measuring stick. And so in this particular text, the measuring stick is the measuring stick is paying taxes. And so the Jews were taxed heavily. They were taxed. Matter of fact, half of their income was given over through tax. They were taxed by the Roman government. They were taxed by the Jewish uh, religious leaders to come in, in the temple. If you wanted to come in the temple and if you wanted to pray, you had to pay a tax. Remember, Matthew is writing this, so it's 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 significant that Matthew give this account because he was the chief tax collector. He knows all about it, and so you had to pay a tax. And then there was just other taxes that Jewish people had to pay, and they were frustrated and they were tired of it. And so they look to trap Jesus. And I'm getting somewhere. Just stay with me. Walk with me. And they looked to trap Jesus because he was a problem. He was a threat to all of these factions and their power and their purpose. And these Jewish people were following him, listened to his teaching, and they were being healed. And, and he has his disciples that was following him. And this was a problem. And so we get to this place where the Pharisees align with the Heridians. Now, just so you know, these two factions used to be enemies. They were at each other. You had the, the those who supported Herod Antipas and the governing of Rome was, was, was heavily uh, positioned up against the Jews. And so you had the Pharisees who were a religious sect, but they were Jews and they were pushing back. And so they, they were enemies, but now they've come together because Jesus is causing a disruption to all of these factions. Now, here's where I want to bring it a little bit closer to home in this understanding. Is that the church has a position in our society. And I'm not talking about the structural church, although that is included, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. You can't talk about the body of Christ, the church, the people, without incorporation of the structure, the institution, the organization, the organizational church as well, the buildings that we go to, the different denominations, etc. And so our purpose, our purpose in this place, in this time, in this current day, under this current election time is the same as Jesus was back then, was to be a disruptor of factions and groups that did not honor and was not, did not have the father's business at forefront. And so the church was supposed to be separate. The church was supposed to be a stand out. Uh, the church is supposed to be a stand out organization, organism as well. than the earthly factions that are trying to serve their own purpose. And so what we see in our current day that is very, very troubling for me, if you're paying attention to it, is that it seems as if the church has sided with one particular political party and the church is, is viewed in our world as something that has chosen a certain political party and a certain political party that produces some type of monetary means back. And so the church is at a serious crossroad in my opinion. In my opinion, that the church is at a crossroad, that we have to make decision, is it Jesus or is it political power or financial returns? And I think there's no truly options here. The Bible that I read says it's Jesus and Jesus only. And so let's get into this because I want us to connect to this because I want you to see where I'm going with this. But I needed you to understand that in this moment, in this time, there's a there's a collusion 
and a confluence of groups and factions who are troubled by the power of Jesus Christ and what he's doing in this particular time. And so it's equal, equal to that what we're seeing in our political scene currently to this day, where there are certain governments and certain government governmental factions and certain political parties who are conjoining together to receive and maintain a certain purpose that does not serve all. And unfortunately, somehow, some way, the organizational church and some have decided to choose and to roll with one or the other. And we're not just talking about one side because there's some who are rolling on the other side as well without me naming these particular political parties, but we know that there's body, the body of Christ is rolling, choosing with these two sides. And the truth of the matter is why it's so important for preachers to preach the gospel around these particular situations in our current earthly um, uh, uh, scenarios is because people need to understand, those of us who are believers and those who are lost who don't know Christ, need to understand that there is something greater. There's something, a greater purpose and a greater reasoning to why we're here and that understand that Christ is everything. Christ is one. Christ is first and everything else falls in the line and finds its place. It's not about what political party you are connected to. It's not about what that political party, how it can serve you and serve your particular falsehoods because some of this stuff is based upon not biblical, true biblical principles. And so it's very important that we understand that in this particular text, with Jesus talking about paying taxes to Caesars, in this text, I'm going to show us how important it is that we don't lose sight of the greater purpose and the greater good because Jesus didn't. And so when we look at our particular text, again, the, 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 the title of this is, it's not about who's on the coin, it's your rendering. And so we read it when Jesus says, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar's and to God the things that belong to God. And so let's let's talk about this and let's get into this. And so when we look at this particular thing, I want you to understand as a believer, as a valued member of society, as a registered voter, et cetera, et cetera. But I want you to find the, the delineation line. And as believers, we're, what we're to do and what we're not to do. So the first thing I want you to see is that you don't test Jesus, you trust Jesus. And so you find in your text, it says it here in verse 17. Matter of fact, you go all the way up to verse 16. And so you can see that they're setting up and they're trying to bait Jesus. They're trying to bait. And they sent their disciples along with the Herodians saying, teacher, they call him teacher. We know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. They're doing all the buttering up. Tell us then what you think. Like they really, really care about what Jesus thinks. And so what I'm seeing is that there is political posturing and connection and, and, and conjoining and coming together as if those who are in the political power really do care about what Jesus and his people have to say. I find it false. I find it's trickery just like these Pharisees and, and these Herodians uh, and these, these religious sects and these factions in this particular text. And so it says, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But it says, but Jesus, aware of their malice, says, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what Jesus thinks. When you are putting Jesus and his church to the test, you are considered a hypocrite. And so Jesus I believe will deal with you accordingly. And so what I'm challenging my brothers, sisters in Christ and preach men and pastors who have platforms, all I got is this room and this technology. You all have, you all have parishioners, you have members, you have people who love you, support you, who follow you, you have platforms, you have churches, mega churches, all these particular things. And I'm urging you, my brothers and my, my brothers in Christ who have these particular 
uh, uh, opportunities God has given you flock to shepherd over, please understand that you don't put Jesus to the test. You need to be telling your believers and your and 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 your 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 sheep and tell yourself that you trust Jesus. And so we're not here to make to to test to 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 align ourselves with political affiliations that discount other factions of life that discounts other peoples of 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 this life on this earth for the sake of our own political posturing and our own power uh, return. You don't put God to the test in that particular way. Matter of fact, Jesus called those of us who do this hypocrites. And so he had an issue with them who the religious sect, the Pharisees who knew the Old Testament, who knew what it meant for God's will to be done and how important it was for the advancement of his kingdom, who understood and the reason why he called them hypocrites, because they were pretending that this mattered, that biblical interpretation and biblical understanding and Christ Jesus being king and Lord of lords and he being the father of our churches and the church as if that mattered. And it doesn't matter to them. This is about posturing for votes. This is about posturing for political cachet. And unfortunately, some of our brothers and sisters in Christ are falling for it. And they're aligning themselves with a political party and political affiliation, one way or the other, blue or red. And I need to remind you that you don't test Jesus, you put your trust in Jesus. And so I don't wanna test the Lord with aligning myself with political affiliations, political parties that posture themselves, that disenfranchise other sects and other people and other groups of life for my own benefit. That's not what Jesus was doing here. And he says, Jesus, aware of their malice. He's aware of your malice. He's aware of what you're trying to do. He's aware of what you're trying to do to his church. Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? And then Jesus goes on to say in verse 19, show me the coin. This is the second part that I want us to know. Don't ever mistake God's power for earthly politics and possessions. Don't ever mistake God's power for earthly politics and possessions. Look at verse 19. It says, show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarii. And Jesus said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? Now we know that Jesus knows exactly who likeness and inscription was on the coin. But he asked them. That's significant because it's important. I always want you to understand we've seen throughout, we see throughout our, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospels of our word of God that God, that Jesus is always asking, who do you say I am? Jesus is always looking to see for us to identify who he is to us because he knows who he is. Never mistake his power for earthly political, for earthly politics and possessions. See, they wanted to try to trip Jesus up and get him in a place where they can even charge him and, and, and or they can either either the Herodians can charge him with with uh, breaking the law of the government and saying, don't pay taxes and telling the Jewish people not to pay taxes. And the Pharisees wanted to want to convict him of of spiritual suicide, of law suicide, and that he would say, pay Caesar and forget that God is king and that he is our he is our father and that's who we look to. And so there was a trickery to here. But Jesus understood cuz the first thing he wanted them to identify who did they who did they think was on the denarii? Who do they identify on the, the on the denarii? And so obviously he knew who it was and they said it's Caesar. And so Jesus says, then render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God the things that are God. 
one of the things I love about Jesus in this particular text and that the, the Holy Spirit brought to me and helped me to understand is that Jesus in this place respected and understood that, 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 that this is beneath me. But in the sense that it's beneath me, I'm going to honor and respect what it is that they're assisting, assisting that I um, have an opinion on. And so if Caesar's likeness is on this particular coin, then you give it to Caesar. But what belongs to God is God's. And so what I like about this is that God's power, it's so powerful and it, it, it extends beyond these earthly political posturing and trying to attempt to get return on their political posturing. It goes so well beyond earthly possessions that come from political posturing and creating systematic type of uh, boundaries and guidelines that only bring a sense of return of possessions, monetary value, that he will allow for you to have exactly what you want. He'll let you have that, but I can promise you this, that in this, I know and I believe wholeheartedly that Jesus is saying, you can take that coin, Caesar. You can take all the taxes, but I'm telling you what belongs to God will always be God's. The problem is not Jesus depicting the difference between what belongs to Caesar or what belongs to God. The problem in this particular text that Jesus is trying to get them to understand and for us to understand, the reason why we read later to find out they walked away marvel is to understand that what belongs to Caesar is Caesar and you can he can have that, but what belongs to God is God's. And the thing about it is, is that what I have to offer is more powerful than anything that Caesar can require or demand from the people. He wanted to make clear that they understood the difference between what belongs to God and what belongs to Caesar. The reason why I say that is because these were people who were well equipped with what the law suggested and what it expressed about God and what it, and all the things that they was required to give to God. And the reason why they walked away marvel was not just because that they couldn't catch him up. He didn't break any laws. He didn't break any spiritual um, uh, 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 phrases or anything like that. But what they understood, walked away, bl their minds blown was that we can pay these taxes all day long, but it does not affect what God has in store for us and what is rendered, what, what needs to be rendered to God. And so what we need to understand, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is that we need to understand that what we give in these earthly scenarios called elections and, 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 and all of these other things that we have to do down here, has its limited process and we have a we have a a obligation and responsibility to adhere to those particular things but when it comes to your trust when it comes to your faith when it comes to your belief system it has to come and it has to be given to god the father and it has to come through his son jesus christ and what i mean by that is putting our faith and anchoring ourselves and things that are limited or have inscriptions of stuff that is earthly that would fade away and that's gonna leave and die and has no saving power, has no grace giving power, has no mercy giving power, belongs where it belongs. But we belong to the Father. There's a dual citizenship you are American because you were born in the territory and the geographical boundaries of this particular country that is deemed to be America. But your citizenship is heaven. And so the notion that our church and the church, the organism, will affiliate themselves with a place and a thing more so than they will stand out and speak citizenship of the kingdom of God speaks volumes. 
And so vote for whoever you want to vote for. Elect whoever you want to elect. But never, never cross the line to think that those things, that Caesar Denary that has his face and the inscription on it, has more weight and more power than the things that belong to God. And so lastly, I just want you to understand that all that is God's is God's. And so I want us to understand very clearly, no matter how you choose to vote in this particular election, no matter how you choose to feel about one political party versus another, no matter how you feel about the church in this current day, because I have some feelings about the church and I would love for the church to back out of the politics because there's Christians on the blue side and there's Christians, God's people on the red side and there's God's people in the middle and there's no one political affiliation that has the autonomy over the church. But it seems like our culture speaks to that and we let them and that bothers me. Jesus says what render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and unto God what belongs to God. Before this election, before you vote, after you vote, everything that you are, everything that you have, everything that returns back to you, everything that God will give you belongs to God. So you do your due diligence as a citizen, as, as a as a citizen of, the, of, of, of America, you vote. As a registered voter, you vote. Vote however you vote, with your heart, with your money, with your conscience, whatever, I don't care. But remember that what belongs to God, belongs to God. And if that line is blurred for you right now, if you are a pastor of a mega church right now and that line is blurred because you're looking at your tax return. I mean, I'm sorry, your stock uh, returns. And so that line is a little blurred for you. If you are uh, um, looking at, 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 at certain um, other factions of, 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 of political posturing and, and, and somehow some way that your belief in Jesus is blurring the lines in a, a, a particular party that might be glorifying sinfulness, let me undivide, if you will, that for you. What belongs to God belongs to God. That's your walk, that's your faith, that's your living, that's your holiness, that's your works, that's your gifts, your talents, the blessings fi financially, monetarily, and uh, materialistic. All of it belongs to God and his purpose. Your words, your mouth, your platforms, all of it. And to the church structurally, organizationally, all of it belongs to God. His church, it's his church. He calls pastors to a church. You are the pastor of that flock that he entrusted you with. It belongs to him. That pulpit, that pulpit, that stage, those lights, all of it belongs to him. So my question to you, What are you rendering and who are you rendering it to? And so for me and my house and my family, we're not confused. We're not ascribing to a political party. We're not subscribing. That's not defining us. That's not defining me. That's not what defines me is what Christ says. And he says, Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. I do my due diligence as a registered voter in America, but my citizenship 
my everything belongs to the king. And if that is confusing for you, if that is blurred for you, then I pray for you. And I don't say this in a judgmental way, but I pray earnestly for you. If your stock returns, if your investment portfolio, if all of these things is more important than your citizenship to the king, then I pray for you. And I do not dare call you what Jesus call you. I let him call it to you. It says you hypocrites. I try not to be a lot of things. But one of the things I really try not to be. And Lord knows I've been guilty of it. And might be guilty of it as I stand. If I, if I think about it. But I try not to be a hypocrite. I try not to be one who profess to know the king, but render unto Caesar, unto government, unto a red, unto blue, unto this movement, that movement, what belongs to God. Father, thank you so much. I pray and hope that, um, that the point was made. I pray, Lord, that um, your word does not come back void. I pray that if someone's watching this and they've kind of given way too much attention, way too much power, way too much any and everything to red or blue or this political affiliation, that they will read this. Jesus, you were clear. There's a line. You didn't have to argue. You didn't have to um, make your point made. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar. His face is on it. His likeness is on it. Give it to him. If we're registered to vote, then go vote. But your faith, your trust, your belief system, your worship belongs to God. And so my prayer, Lord, is that all of us, myself included, that we would never forget that. It's not in a vaccine. It's not in red. It's not in blue. It's not in white or black. It's not in this presidential candidate or that presidential candidate, this vice president, this vice president. It is in God. It all belongs to you. Help us to do that today. Today, Lord. Let us not wrestle with it anymore. Let us repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I've given way too much attention. I've given way too much of my, 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 my everything, rendering it to Caesar and whatever Caesar might be when it belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. For, thank you for your forgiveness. And from this point forward, Lord, I render unto you what belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray and hope that you um, kind of got a little bit of, I could have gone deeper. I, I didn't, I didn't want to take too much of the time, but I, I pray and hope that you all can understand uh, what God is saying to us. And, and that scripture just stood out. It just, the Lord hit me with it and it was just like, whoa. Like the problem is not, registering to vote or what candidate and who is it and who is the problem is what are we rendering and who are we rendering to and the Lord wants the rendering back where it belongs and I truly believe that it must start with the church first everybody else it is what it is but God's people born again believers who Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected for have to figure out and make a decision. Is it your cash or is it Christ? Is it the return on your stock investments or is it the return on your salvation? Which one is it? You got to make a decision. Um, as a matter of fact, the decision was already made. and should have been made. But if those lines are blurred for you, I pray that you read this text. I pray that you get back into your word and reset um, what 
deserves to be rendered to the Father. Do your due diligence as a, as, as a, a, a citizen of America, but know that your citizenship is in heaven.